Hey guys, Ron here, and many months ago I released a video about the best designs from each region, but it only covered the first four generations, so now it's time to complete this saga. Here are the 10 best designs from each generation based on the criteria that fans believe make for a good Pokemon design. The best designs are unique, recognizable, and entertaining without being too abstract. They're expressive and full of some kind of personality while still being believable creatures. They gotta look adorable in some way without being simple, but they have to look powerful while still being friendly. The design should have some kind of concept and execute it in a clever and cool way. Perhaps the color scheme is very pleasing and indicates the Pokemon's type or concept, but it should always achieve the goal it was designed for. Some Pokemon are perfect for what they're supposed to be, but don't adhere to what most fans would enjoy. Like, Probopass is exactly what the concept is supposed to look like, but it's simply not what everybody wants in a Pokemon. And I'm also not going to put a Pokemon just because it looks really cool to me, like Rillaboom. It has to look cool and fulfill most of these criteria. It's still subjective because it's art, but I'm trying to be a bit objective about it. That's why the order of these could change tomorrow as I learn more and appreciate each design, but I'm confident about most of my picks. Generation 5 has the most amount of Pokemon, so it was the toughest list to devise. Number 10 is... A tie between Braviary and Archaeops. Both were vying for this spot, so I asked Twitter to decide the winner. Archaeops only won by around 1%, so the margin of error was too close for me to settle on a winner. I mean, it makes sense for the ancestor of all bird Pokemon to place in the same spot as one of its badass descendants. Archaeops is such a good take on the Archaeopteryx. It looks primal and aggressive, yet pretty and vibrant. This contrast of dangerous yet impressive is exactly what a strong Pokemon should look like. I'd say Braviary is successful in the same aspect. It looks wild and free, but its Native American headdress gives it this natural human element that pays respect to the original Americans, contrasting with the red, white, and blue color scheme of this warrior bird. It's a very appropriately flashy yet simple design. Design. Number 9. Genesect. I mean, it looks exactly as it should. It's one of the coolest, most insane looking Pokemon in existence, and as a mythical, it's allowed to pull off a more complicated look. But even with this bulky blaster, it has a sleek and streamlined design. The fact that it can fold in on itself like a transformer is icing on the cake. Number 8. Haxorus. This is one of the few Pokemon with very realistic proportions, and for a non-legendary Pokemon, it raises the bar. It has just the right amount of armor without being over-designed. Its color pops out, and the giant axe horns are balanced by its powerful thighs. It's one of the most imposing Pokemon, but it still looks just intelligent enough to tame. That's the mark of a good Pokemon. Number 7. Zebstrika. I never understood the idea that Zebstrika looks like a plain zebra. This is exactly how a zebra Pokemon should look like. The white lightning patterns and horns contrast with the black fur to make a thunderous statement. Along with the subtle electric blue and yellow accents, this Pokemon looks like the embodiment of lightning. Number 6. Hydreigon. The subtle tire tracks on its underside reveal this Pokemon's German tank inspiration. It looks straight out of a medieval fantasy or fairy tale. It's one of the scariest looking Pokemon with a nice touch of goofiness to make it entertaining and lighthearted. The color scheme is beautiful, and the fact that the wings look like extra faces when it's silhouetted is a genius take on the Yamata no Orochi and Hydra origin. Number 5. Zoroark. It's simply a really good looking Pokemon. The color scheme is gorgeous. It's one of the few Pokemon with extra details like Kabuki-esque makeup and hair highlights. It looks special and naughty, a perfect dark type design. Its body shape and poses in all forms of media are so fluid as well. It looks like it's always about to transform or pull some sort of trick. Number 4. Chandelure. A Pokemon with a gothic aesthetic and ghostly color palette. The violet flames are stunning, and the bright lights look even more intense against the pitch black ghostly body of Chandelure, possibly the most well executed object mon. It's very charming and alluring. Number 3. Volcarona. This regal looking moth has one of my favorite color schemes. It's both tropical and celestial looking. The dots on the wings look like sunspots, its antenna horns look like a giant crown, and its corona-like wings make it look like a fiery seraph, an angelic bug that is above all other insects in the Pokemon world. And of course, a non-legendary Pokemon that looks like a legendary Pokemon is always high praise. Number 2. Superior. I'm actually a huge fan of the Unova starters. I think they're well designed, contrary to popular belief. So much so that I think the gorgeous Superior has one of the deepest designs in Pokemon, full of many hidden details. It's based on French aristocracy, and its hair-like patterns mimic the hair of Lady Oscar from The Rose of Versailles. Its white face alludes to 17th century makeup, and it's covered in leaf patterns and a fleur-de-lis in the center, an insignia used by French monarchs. It even has its tiny arms crossed behind its back as it looks up and judges you. Now before revealing the number one slot, here are a ton of honorable mentions. Crocodile was gonna be number 11. It's menacing and cool. A flawless design. Escavalier is dope. It's super creative and fun. 
Samurott is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. It's actually a genius design that most people are salty about because it's not standing up. Its shell sword, armor, and whisker facial hair are incredibly badass and makes sense for both a samurai and otters, who in real life do have pockets that they store shells in. I think Sazbok is majestic and handsome. Not every Pokemon needs to be badass. This Pokemon is as artistic as intended. Golurk is such a fun design. All the allusions to the Golem of Prague and its color scheme and patterns are very neat. Cafagrigus is also a very well executed object mon. It looks incredibly creepy yet entertaining. Bisharp is one of the coolest Pokemon ever. Rioniclus is one of the most creative Pokemon ever. Scrafty is both cool and creative. I love the idea of a lizard whose shedded skin looks like the baggy clothes of a hoodlum. Joltik is one of the cutest designs in Pokemon, at, at least to me. And there are so many more to mention like Darmanitan, Whimsicott, Livani, Crustal, Scolipede, Gotharida, and even Vanillite. But this is a long video, so let's finally reveal number one. Zekrom and Reshiram. I always thought that these two were some of the most impressive looking Pokemon designs in the franchise. As a duo, they contrast yet complete each other. You have the pitch black masculine and futuresque dragon with an engine for a tail, representing an ideal future, complementing the ethereal feminine white wyvern with a torch for a tail, representing the truths of the past. Every single aspect of their design helps illustrate the lesson that they convey, especially the concept that one can't exist without the other, exemplified by how Reshiram's eyes are the color of Zekrom's lightning, and Zekrom's eyes are the color of Reshiram's fire. Kyurem is a wonderful completion to the trio, but to me, these two are perfect. Generation 6 introduced basically half the amount of Pokemon designs Generation 5 did, so it was definitely easier to narrow down, but every design is so different from each other, it was hard to decide the order. Number 10 goes to Esper. How do you convey the design of a tiny little child who's trying their darn best to control their destructive psychic powers? You draw this exact Pokemon. Esper is so well-rounded because it's cute, creepy, emotional, and tells a story just with one look. The idea that its ears shelter its powers is also very well executed. Number 9. The entire Go-Goat line. I've always thought this was a perfect and well-executed family of Pokemon. You have this adorable combination of plant and animal evolving into this distinguished and powerful creature. This is exactly what a grass type should look like in my mind. Nothing is far-fetched, nothing is exaggerated, and it all works very well. If there was just one more Pokemon in this line, they'd be amazing starters. And the bicycle aesthetic with their handlebar horns gets an A+. Number 8. Sylveon. One of the most aesthetically pleasing Pokemon around. It's the definition of pretty, and a well-handled introduction for the fairy types. It quickly became the favorite evolution of many fans. The ribbons always give this Pokemon a dynamic pose. It's such a treat to see it in motion. Number 7. Halucha. Such a wonderful color scheme and a perfect execution of a luchador hawk design. Both the idea of the cape-like wings and mask-like facial plumage are very welcomed. I love designs like these that can be cool, cute, and pretty at the same time. Number 6. Panchem and Pangoro. Panchem is such a cute little panda Pokemon with enough sass to make it look battle ready. I don't know anybody who would be disappointed by this Pokemon. Pangoro is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Such an intimidating yet cuddly design. I love how its fur looks like a trench coat and its bamboo leaves look like a toothpick. The completely dark eyes make it look so unique and its pot belly is the perfect addition to prevent it from looking too serious. It's a Japanese delinquent panda. That's a fun concept. Number 5. Tyrantrum, our first T-Rex Pokemon and it didn't disappoint. Its cape-like feathers, crown-like crest, and white beard all make it look like the tyrannical monster it is. It was the king of the ancient world, and this design nails that aspect without making it look too creepy. All these Pokemon elements anthropomorphize this brutal dinosaur without it being uncanny. Number 4. Malamar. I think Malamar is both a perfect concept and design. An upside down vampire squid with tentacles as flowing locks and a collar along with the lights on its belly all resembling a vampire's cloak. Its sinister smirk is the finishing attribute that makes this Pokemon successful. If it makes you uncomfortable, then the design is doing its job. They decided to make a manipulative looking squid and they went above and beyond. Number 3. Noivern. A speaker dragon bat is such a cool concept, and they nailed it. I'm a huge fan of this color scheme too. It looks like a predator that naturally implements the powers that come from its ears. These are the kind of designs I love, and I'm sure most of you do too. A fun mixture of two concepts that work. Number 2. Greninja. The idea of a shinobi frog with a tongue scarf is genius, I will admit. Its aerodynamic appearance and bubble pads really make it look like a rogue warrior. It's incredibly underrated how they combined a frog with a human concept and even pose, but successfully dodged the trap of making it look too much like a human, unlike Antelian's execution. 
Now here are some honorable mentions before moving on. I think Hoopa Unbound is super underrated, intimidating yet fun. It was basically number 11. The starters are incredibly cute and well-rounded. They look exactly like they should. I see no flaw in them and tons of potential, despite having it my personal favorite just like any fan. Trevenant is a perfectly executed tree monster design. It's as scary as can be without being too creepy. Floet is so pretty and cute. I love how it holds on to its signature flower. Florges is amazing too, but Floet has a bit more personality and balance. Helioptile is a clever concept and design. Solar powered frills are genius. Gudra's great, adorable yet clearly powerful. I do prefer its Hisuian form a bit more though. And Clawitzer is such a welcome design as well. I just think it's neat. But number one is both Xerneas and Eveltal. Such a good looking duo. The perfect representations of life and death. Xerneas is absolutely beautiful, from its rainbow lit antlers, projecting light onto its back to look like the spots on a fawn, to its slender and elegant limbs, all forming an ingenious X shaped silhouette reminiscent of a tree. A perfect fairy type and legendary Pokemon. Completely contrasting with Eveltal's ferocious wing arms and tail, cleverly forming a Y shape, and Eveltal is one of the coolest looking designs in all of Pokemon. I'm so proud of this franchise for producing such an interesting manifestation of destruction, with its vein like patterns and smoke like collar. Look at them. Look at them. Who would have thought? Not me. Generation 7's got some bangers. It's the first group with regional forms taking up a bunch of slots, but number 10 goes to. Poipole. The most popular Ultra Beast, and I know why. It's a very well-designed alien Pokemon, yet it still feels at home with all the other designs. It's got a good balance of exotic yet familiar. It's so expressive and cute yet clearly dangerous. That's what makes a perfect Pokemon. Number 9. Marshadow. Especially its zenith form. It manages to combine adorable and powerful, just like Poipo, in one shadow child. Its blazing Roman helmet and eyes are very compelling traits. Its color scheme is tasteful and its existence is appreciated. I love Marshadow. Number 8. Vikavolt. One of the coolest looking bug types in existence, with an excellent color scheme. Combining a stag beetle with a railgun to make a taser bug is super sick. It's the opposite of lame. It's made of so many interesting shapes and I love how it was designed to be able to carry charge bug to power its moves. Number 7. Alolan Raichu. To most people, including me, this is an upgrade of an already great looking Pokemon. Its tanner, tropical color scheme with the eyes of a summer sky are only rivaled by how natural Raichu looks on its surfboard tail. Raichu is adorable while looking radical and fun. This is the kind of Pokemon we all want to train. Number 6. Solandit and Solazzle. Solanda pulls off this wicked yet lovable look. It's so appealing to think about it slithering around. Its lava hand pattern and mask facial pattern are such wonderful subtle design traits of a kleptomaniac bandit. And Solazzle is the embodiment of pheromones and feminine charm. I love how the orange on Solanda becomes pink flame patterns on Solazzle. It's one of the most stylish color schemes in Pokemon. Its feminine figure is the right balance between tasteful and deliberately sexy. Number 5. Alolan Marowak. Turning Marowak into a ghostly fire dancer with the prettiest flames imaginable is not only visibly impressive, but makes a whole lot of sense with Marowak's lore. Not only did they give this Pokemon one of the best color schemes in Pokemon, but extra details like the flame-like pattern on its skull that it uses to light its bone like a match, and the skeleton patterns on its back make this look two times better than the already solid design of Cantonian Marowak. Number 4. Glycopod. It's a giant isopod warrior with the armor of a samurai. Anybody looking for a powerful Pokemon would instantly look at this creature and know that it can slash you to death. I love Pokemon who you can tell are possessed by strong trainers just by glancing at the design. It's rendered so intricately, but it's always clear how imposing it is. One of the few Pokemon whose ambiguous type is actually a design strength because it's always so unsettling to see it for the first time and not know which Pokemon to send out against it. Number 3. Alolan Ninetales. In my opinion, the most beautiful Pokemon around. Not only is the concept of an arctic fox nine tails incredibly natural, but the execution of the concept was unmatched. I don't really have to describe how gorgeous this drawing is, I can just show this to anybody and they'll enjoy looking at it, while possibly understanding that it lives in the coldest environments. It's a perfect design. Number 2. Rowlet and Decidueye. The other starters are great, but these two are perfect to me. Rowlet is flawless. From its superior roundness to its leaf bow tie, it's one of the most charming Pokemon in existence. While Decidueye is exactly what we expected and wanted from the final form of Rowlet. It's as cool as can be, but still approachable. A perfect starter is appealing to both fight alongside and go on a journey with. A hoodie made of leaves that also acts as a bow to its feather arrows is peak Pokemon concept and design. And that's without touching the various cultural aspects of this Pokemon, like Robin Hood, barn owls being associated with ghosts, and the long legs 
plagued extinct Hawaiian stilt owl. Before moving on, here are a lot of honorable mentions. Alolan Executor could have been number 11. It elevated a once forgotten Pokemon into meme status. It's as appealing as it is well designed. Sokolio, Lunala, Cosmog, and Ultra Necrozma are all interesting legendary designs. The Midnight Lycanroc is a perfect werewolf Pokemon. Coming from an arachnophobe, Arachnid is perfectly executed. Primarina is beautiful. Buzzwole is a clever juxtaposition on the idea that mosquitoes are tiny and weak. Feramosa is elegant and sleek, far from the bizarre designs of other Ultra Beasts. Toucanon is actually more well designed than you think. I love how its beak glows and fills up like a meter as it charges up its beak blast. Craballer is such a classically clever boxing design. I want to mention many other well designed Pokemon like the Oricorios, Steeny, Pessimian, Pukumuku, Togedemaru, Alolan Sandshrew, and of course Minior, but let's not drag this on. Number 1 is Mimikyu. One of the most interesting Pokemon in existence, and its entertaining lore can be instantly recognized from Mimikyu's design. A ghost disguising itself as Pikachu. It's clear that Mimikyu crafted its costume on its own, from sticks and a rag that it scribbled on. It's a very believable design from an unbelievable concept. That's the definition of a successfully executed character. Now since a great deal of new Pokemon were added to Generation 8 and Legends Arceus, I thought it would be cheap to add these new forms and mons in the Generation 8 list, so Hisui gets its own mini top 5. Number 5 is Weirdeer. We've been waiting for a Stantler evolution for decades, and Weirdeer did not disappoint. Such a handsome and awe-inspiring Pokemon. The beard looks natural, and the horns look intricate and sacred, yet naturally evolved from Stantlers. It gives off the exact vibes I think Game Freak wanted it to, and that makes this design successful. Number 4. The Hisuian Starters. While I have my preferences, I think all three are in the same tier. I think Hisuian Samurott is as cool as Unovan Samurott. The color scheme is less cohesive, but the jagged shells really work. Alolan Decidueye is one of the coolest looking Pokemon designs in existence, so it's tough to beat, but Hisuian Decidueye is a great execution of a Ronin who wanders Hisui. The fall aesthetic is very pretty too. And some people would say Hisuian Typhlosion is more interesting, and definitely more dazzling than the original, so its ghostly design is definitely successful. Number 3. Hisuian Growlithe and Arcanine. I'd say Growlithe looks better in this new form. It's far less generic and a bit more adorable. Hisuian Arcanine doesn't have the perfect color scheme, but it's still a top tier Pokemon design. It looks divine, and the gray does match both the rock typing and smoke of a fire type. A lot of Hisuian Arcanine predictions were a bit too over designed, while all the new elements in the official Hisuian Arcanine are well balanced. Number 2 Basculegion. Such an amazing Pokemon. I can't get enough of the male form. It's such an understandable progression from Basculin. By looking at it, you'd think that they had this idea from the beginning. The ancient style in which the ghostly wisps are rendered makes this Pokemon look hallowed and appropriate in its setting. And number one is... Hisuian, Zorua, and Zoroark. Probably the coolest Pokemon introduced in Legends Arceus. You can feel the vengeance in this Zoroark and the sadness in Zoroa. They are ethereal and holy looking. Their color scheme is brilliant. It could allude to kitsune masks from Japanese theater, frostbite, blood, or simply a chilling revenant. I've always thought it was genius to take the tails of a kitsune and put them on the head of the fox as flowing hair. It's very successful. Finally time for Generation 8 Pokemon. Number 10, Galarian Ponyta. One of the prettiest, cutest, and most unproblematic designs in existence. You can not be into adorable Pokemon, but you can't say this design is subpar. The pastel colors are unique and charming, and the new deliberately diminutive proportions make it substantially cuter. Number 9. Surfetched. This is the embodiment of a Chad. The onion sword and shield clearly being cut from the same stock is very well crafted. The eyebrows, eyes, smirk, and pure white body all contribute in making this design look effortlessly handsome yet cocky. They gave him a lot of personality without making Sir Fetched humanoid. Amazing job. Number 8. Wooloo. Just ask any fan their impression of Wooloo and it will be resoundingly positive. And that obviously has nothing to do with its battle prowess, so you know it's 100% based on appearance. While it may be the simplest design in this video, its shape clearly indicates that it can roll and bounce like a ball, and its subtle braids demonstrate how useful its wool is to humans. A very entertaining character, as all Pokemon should be. Number 7. All three starters. From the moment I laid eyes on them, I couldn't help but think this was the most entertaining trio of starters. They exuded personality for better or worse. They were simple yet complete. Sure, other trios have better evolutions, but these three are one of the few starters to get pretty much equal praise and love. I think Grookey is a perfect Pokemon, but I love Scorbunny and enjoy seeing Sobble. Number 6. Scentiscorch. 
One of the most underrated designs in Galar because it's not exactly cute. But there are so many neat details, like how it looks like the coils of a radiator and even an oven, has an exclamation point on the top of its head, and a fire mustache reminiscent of the ornaments on a Kabuto helmet. And let's not mention how all these origins are even more explicit in its Asian-inspired Gigantamax. It makes even more sense as the ace of Kabu, the only gym leader who hails from a Japanese-inspired region. Number 5. Toxtricity. This Pokemon is the essence of a cool punk rocker. I think the idea to have a Pokemon play the string-like protrusions on its body to create electrical sound is incredible. I'm a fan of its ambiguously reptilian and or amphibious face, which makes sense with its poisonous spikes and electric mohawk, which makes it look like a punk rocker and a lizard. And I'm an even bigger fan of its Gigantamax form. Number 4. Or Beetle. Not only is this entire evolutionary line a cool reference to the progression of radar technology, but this mad scientist ladybug reveals its giant brain whenever it attacks and its wing spots glow with the rings of a radar. It's cooler than any ladybug design I could have ever imagined. Sometimes Game Freak surprises us with clever designs and concepts like Or Beetle. Number 3. The Galarian Legendary Birds. They're all on par or even better than their original designs. They're definitely way more interesting. Galarian Moltres alone deserves to be here. Magenta flames with black feathers are as intimidating and beautiful of a color scheme as can be. It's ridiculous how natural Zapdos looks with the body of an ostrich, and Articuno's snow goggles not only make sense with its former ice typing, but also make sense with its new eye laser powers. Every aspect of these three was well designed. Perfect in every aspect. Number 2. Corviknight. I've never seen an ordinary non-legendary Pokemon like Corviknight and not had any critiques. It's black armor, beard, red eyes, everything about it is necessary and contributes in making debatably the coolest looking regional bird. Heck, Corviknight could have been a pseudo legendary and I wouldn't have questioned it. Now here are some honorable mentions before revealing the final Pokemon. Applin and Appleton are a nice treat with unconventional designs that work. They break the mold and own their goofiness. I still can't get over the pun of placing a worm in an apple. Zamazenta and Zacian could have easily been on the list. While I'm fine with their overdesigned look, not everybody is. They're still amazing. Graplocked is another Pokemon I regret not placing. It's a genius design, but even the number 10 design was genius. Galarian Weezing is one of the most entertaining and clever designs in the franchise. Cursula is a personal favorite. Its design tells such a sad yet interesting story. Rillaboom, I think, is super underrated. I get its execution in battle isn't the best, but in pretty much any official art, it looks natural and impressive. Snom is perfect. Grimmsnarl executed its concept amazingly, but I get it's too ugly for some. Dreadna is such a classic looking design without any flaws. Poltegeist was extremely well handled, and Phalanx was a monumental addition to the franchise. A lot of these honorable mentions could have easily been on the list, but no doubt most of us can agree that the number one spot deserves it. Cause number one is... Dragapult. What's fairly clever about this Pokemon's entire concept is that its ghost typing and powers line up with all three of its origins. It's based on an extinct amphibian, therefore a ghost, and a stealth bomber, all of which disappear in some aspects. It's not just a neat idea, but a cohesive and genius combination of relevant elements, executed in an entertaining way with its creepy projectiles, color scheme, and sleek appearance. It's an example of the pinnacle of Pokemon design and concepts. Now if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, leave a like and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Check the description for all the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, my Patreons where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early, or press the join button for even more rewards. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye!